With that, we have our student liaisons. I think just Schrader tonight. Thomas has a big musical coming up, so I know the, the girls are busy with that. And just, and just Lone Wolf, you are. Wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Again. Hi, Hi, Roman. As you can see, next to me is not Tristan today. <laughs> he sends his regards to the board as he is out sick, oh. unfortunately. But as he's recovering, I hope to still share the news of what's happening at Schrader. Schrader faculty fought hard, literally down to the point game, where they took the dub home at the Crosstown Webster Facility charity game. The students even got to compete in the halftime games, where Schrader again took wins for took wins again. Tristan and I got to participate in the tricycle race, where we <laughs> must apologize to Mr. DeWitt, for we allegedly may have not returned his tricycle with the seat in the right way. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that our Schrader students have grown out of our tricycle days. <laughs> the good old days. <laughs> Either way, we take pride in saying that we scored more points than some of our teachers. We are proud to say that we, have, we had such a great game and stu Schrader students' selection reflected that. While Schrader won, the real winner was a Challenger Field charity, which collected over $2,000 in donations to benefit Challenger Field. As well with sports, Schrader's trap shooting team season is to a start. Beginning yesterday, there are 10 students on the team. While we placed second place in our state class two years ago, we were ready to take back the title after losing it last year. Some of our athletes are also nationally ranked, and it came to the top 5% of all national athletes. The team is very optimistic about our season. Quality over quantity is a quote Mr. Milliman wants to live by this year. Future Harvard student, senior Corinthia G, is now the New York State champion in the triple jump after competing in the championship last weekend on Staten Island. Her class and I are very proud of such an amazing athlete. Furthermore, the lacrosse season had started Started yesterday, the students are confident in their ability this year, and the Warriors are excited to see where it all goes. The same follows with field hockey and flag football. National Art Society has inducted 29 members, and World Language Honor Society has inducted 76. And last Friday, Mr. Eichler had a poll worker attend AP Gov classes where, they, where he helped all AP Gov students who are legible to register to vote. Many students signed up to be poll workers in this upcoming primary election. I hope to see all of you there executing your civil, civil, sorry, civic duty while I'm working. <laughs> Webster Schrader had a night at the movies performance where the Blues brother, Mr. Eckler and Mr. Peck, have returned after a lengthy hiatus for a long-awaited live performance alongside the Schrader band team. And uh, as always, thank you for listening to to, well, I guess me this time, ramble about what's happening at Trader. We love our programs and we patiently wait for a yet exciting, exciting results for the spring sports season. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Ronan. You. Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you. Tell Tristan we hope he feels better. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right there, perfect. Hi, Joan. How are you? All right. You know, the musical's coming up. There is a buzz. I'm sure the tickets are flying off the shelves. We're going to several. <laughs> All right. Um, good evening, everyone. Sorry I wasn't here last time, and it's really good to see you. Um, can't believe this is March and we're not plowing. I'm so excited. <laughs> as sure I am, as sure I am, all of you are. Thank you very much to our student liaison for representing them and the understanding of they pick up each other's um, where we know people need to be at different places at different times. Our WTA members, we are again as busy. It's March, you know it. February, March played huge roles. Our elementary schools got to share their 100 and 101. I think they have a lot more fun with the 101 some schools with the Dalmatian theme, but the equations the math students are creating, the all students, the equations, the themes, the arts and crafts, they're doing such a great job. Also at the elementary school buildings, they're learning about frogs. They're doing some research projects and then writing some nonfiction pieces. I'm hoping to have a piece or two next time I'm up here. You remember when got those 
um, really neat projects. You see it through the eyes of children for the first time all over again. Very cool. Not only are they doing things inside, we know they're also doing things outside those classroom walls. Those music teachers, as well as all our WTA members, are so busy. And some students at the, all the elementary buildings have qualified for not only all-county band, but all-county chorus. And it's almost routine, but it's still a major, major accomplishment. And we know families are a big part of that, as well as all of us. Our middle schoolers, they did a month-long interactive billboards, bulletin boards, and Google Classrooms with yoga, and doing some poses with teachers, taking some deep breaths, going into classes, and each day they represented some really cool challenges. As well as a Crossridge, people were doing something with, I want to read this correctly, the Newberry Meetup, where the students went down to Rundle Library downtown. They met up with students from all over the area. They debated books at the middle school level and brought back some books that they feel that we should be reading in our curriculum. What's very cool to say is some of those books were in those donations in October, so that was really neat. Our WTA members at the high school, they are as busy as ever. As you could see, some of our students are in that musical where we have students from all programs, all grades in those participating in. We also had a wonderful visit from when the Teachers and Citizens in Action had a wonderful visit from Mayor Malik Evans. And that was, it was really cool to watch the kids mm -hmm. react to um, such an important figure in our area and to be able to be there and see it and watch their expressions, their questions, their interactions. That was an amazing opportunity. Um, also, outside our settings, our shared spaces. I don't know if anyone got down, I will get you it. I planned on telling you in February and I should have sent it to you. Our art students at both sides of the ridge go with their WTA members. They are on display. Another thing that I learned that is actually a routine that they do. Um, and they're, they're on display at Nazareth Art Gallery. What an incredible experience making those connections with students from all over the area as far. I think it went north. Rose was the um, furthest west, east, east, east. furthest east. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it, it was neat. They had an opening show. It was just a beautiful, beautiful space to see a number of teachers, number of students that participated in that. And the artwork that is just incredible. There's, they leave you speechless sometimes, those opportunities. We also had Dream Club, and they put on Celebrating Black Art, February 29th. What a great day to be able to celebrate Leap Year, even the best. The musicians, the vocals, the poets that came and read and shared, and it was a really beautiful evening together. Our WTA committee, our EDIs are working, filling those tools, with um, providing opportunities and expanding our toolbox. Our PTSA, you heard the, was the very first thing they shared, that March 6th basketball game. That is now, long ago it was other things, now it's, it's doing it for Miracle Field and what a great cause and what a way to pick things through. Our PAC. We are active with our vote. We know we want to inspire public education. We want to inspire people to go into it. And we know we need to be in front of our students and we need to be in front of our legislature. So we're doing really wonderful things with donations there. Our WTA cares. We cannot thank you enough. We came just under $9,500. And at first, what started off as a rivalry just sparred into what can we do and between Arondequoit and Webster. And we probably, they all said it, we probably raised double doing that together. And part of that's because of you. Thank you so, so much. Our upcoming, our empty bowls. Starting this week, goes through March. 
and then they will be on donations. I will let you know when that drive is. We also have a drive going on right now. Our SEL groups, including OWL, are working for Hope House and House of Mercy, bringing up and doing donations for the homeless and bringing it there on Friday. We needed to move we had so many donations, they needed to move and get more boxes to put things in, to bring things downtown. Our Community Arts Day is 13th, and our SEPTA tournament is the information I left in front of you. Some of you may not be aware of it because five years ago when we got hit with some COVID, we were not allowed, you can't, you can't bowl. <laughs> and this is our Thomas Owl Schrader goal special ed pieces where we will be competing, we will be having fun, we will be donating, and it is a huge fundraiser. We usually, I think Dina Malbouf has now taken up pretty much three quarters of the bowling alley. Kids bowl downstairs, parents are upstairs, staff are upstairs. It is a great investment and it goes to our scholarships that has been such a success in the back that even though we couldn't run it for the last five years, we've still been able to give out the scholarships. Oh. So the scholarships continue to be given out, but now we need to refund those and we need to get back to it. It, is, it was one of Colleen's favorites. I remember she would be there seven in the morning mm -hmm. <laughs> setting things up when it was a golf. Now it's a uh, bowling and we want you to have that information in front of you. It really is a very neat event. And on front side is about the bowling, on the back side is about the sponsorship. Because we all know we can't be everywhere and there are ways to do it. So I hope you enjoy your evening. I hope you get out when it's still light out. <laughs> and I look forward to seeing you after break. And Thank you, Joni, for the uh, oranges and the little goodies that you have. We appreciate that, too. Good. Thank you. All right. I will begin our campus news. And as I'm doing that, if I could, please, if I could ask our guests to come on up. Dr. Uh, Mrs. Doyle, Dr. Callahan, and our two wonderful, Kristen and Aaron, if you guys don't join us, too. Mrs. Burns and Mrs. Fenton. Okay. I'm going to start out with... <coughs> Uh, a reminder. <laughs> I think this is a reminder that maybe you're not familiar with, but if, and if you're not, it's okay. But there is a big event coming up on uh, April 8th. And so I just want to remind everyone again um, that the total solar eclipse is coming our way on April 8th uh, and that we will be in the path of totality and that we'll have the opportunity of a lifetime to witness this rare celestial event. The solar eclipse is on the last day of our spring break, so we hope our families will enjoy this experience together. The eclipse will happen gradually between 2 o'clock and 4.30 um, in the afternoon. The sun will be completely blocked by the moon reaching totality for close to four minutes at around 3.20 p.m. Here's a couple pieces of information we want to make sure everyone knows. We, I sent this out in one newsletter. I'll probably send it out again. But our students are learning so much about the solar eclipse and we'll be sharing viewing resources with our families prior to the big day. Along with many area districts, we will also be sending home two sets of special eclipse viewing glasses with all of our students and two, two, set, or two pair of glasses also for our staff. And we also caution our community to drive safely as this incredibly rare event is expected to attract hundreds of thousands of visitors to our area and it will all depend upon um, how much sunshine that we will get that day. But regardless, there will still be a huge event in that. And I know everybody's familiar with that, but I wanted to make sure everybody knew what the district was doing uh, in that regard. So, and with that, now I am going to turn it over to our special guest. Again, Mrs. Doyle is our principal at Plank South Elementary. Dr. Callahan is our principal right here uh, at Spry Middle School. Mrs. Burns and Mrs. Fenton are both of our 
um, our directors for our Wonder Care program, and I can't wait to hear from all of you. So we'll turn it over to Mrs. Doyle. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for um, the amazing board visit that we had last week with Linda, Brian, and Aaron. We were so excited to be able to showcase some of the shifts that we've made with literacy <laughs> instruction and all of our different tiers, um, the work that we have done is all based in the science of reading and we've shifted our instruction to reflect that and we've seen some really um, great growth with our students. So we showcased that on that visit, but that's not what I'm showcasing for you tonight. Um, we, in thinking about educating the whole child, are gonna be showcasing some of the other exciting things that our students are doing across all seven buildings through specials and encore library and then also band and orchestra. So with that as a quote, um, the arts, science, humanities, physical education, languages, and math all have equal and central contributions to make a student's education. So I will showcase for you some of the exciting things in our buildings connected to arts and science and physical education. So at Plank South, our students in general music are using their second hand in the recorder, which is a big deal in fifth grade. Mm -hmm. And Mrs. Alvaro was teaching them in this specific lesson how to play the main melody to SpongeBob so that it would get them excited oh. for the spry yeah. um, performance this past <laughs> weekend. And then there's some pictures of a third grade student. So our third graders went to the Memorial Art Gallery. They were learning about Picasso and they have um, cardboard faces inspired by Picasso as they're learning to mix colors. The neighbors to the north of Plank South, our Plank North friends, um, they recently had some Sabres players visit in PE. The players donated floor hockey equipment to them. They also had alumni from um, Plank North that are now at Spry and Schrader that came for this event. There's also a picture of their chorus concert. Our combined um, band and orchestra had a State Road Plank North, Plank South concert recently here at Spry, getting our kids excited to play together for when they come here next year. And then that top left picture was on World Read Aloud Day, and Plank North had a lot of visitors coming into classrooms to share some great books with them. Clem South students have been learning about algorithms in Encore, and as they were taught algorithms through dance and learning about two different things, looping and conditionals, and how they applied to dancing, they then took those algorithms and applied them to moving those robots around the room. So that was at Clem North, but as you know, that program has consistency through all of the buildings. Um, that was a lesson that I loved being able to see myself at playing South. In Clem North, for those of you who are Taylor Swift fans, their librarians <laughs> making a strong effort to connect reading to their students with some of the ways she displays books and brings in different diverse authors. Mm, so <laughs> um, there's also their art teacher working hard to make sure that their students are seeing their art displayed throughout the hallways. So you can see a great um, display there. Some of their work will be showcased at Community Arts Day coming up on April 13th. At State Road, they have a student who is in a chair, and so they did an inclusive basketball game to support that student. Schlegel has a few things going on. They have a new librarian who's taken on the fourth grade newspaper. That was um, something that some of those student leaders wanted to do. The newspaper is showcasing lots of different things that are happening throughout the building. They had an opportunity to interview when the um, Harlem Wizards came and the March Book Madness display is up there, which many of our buildings do. We read books and narrow it down through voting. So their newspaper is also covering that exciting event. And at DeWitt, there was a video. It's not going to be here right now, but I'm sure Mark will share it if you want it. Their students, as they were um, learning about Louis Armstrong in Black History Month, were learning about the history of his life, his musical career. And then they wrapped that up with all of the students singing It's a Wonderful World. Wow. So a great way to bring music cool. in and connect it into um, that very important historical learning experience. So I just wanted to thank our board for all of the support that you're doing for all of our students to support their academic, social, emotional well-being. Thank all. you very much, Jill. Yeah. Presentation. Okay. <laughs> 
slides. So now we have the contrast between the elementary Canva <laughs> slides and the secondary collage. Um, so I, I want to thank um, the board and leadership and those tuning in from home and here tonight for the opportunity to talk about what's going on um, in the secondary schools. If I can click through here. Yep. Um, so in, in continuing with the theme of music, March is Music in Our Schools Month, and Willink um, had 200 band students perform at the Music Extravaganza at Thomas High School on March 7th. Um, and continuing in pursuit of board goal number one, um, teachers are continuing to look at abstract ways to help students connect with learning. Um, pictured on the screen, you can see sixth grade students graphing points in, um, on a quadrant in the hallway. Mm -hmm. Um, at Schrader, we recently wrapped up our Tier 1 initiative, Our, our Words, Our School. Um, this included some explicit teaching on communication um, and promoting acts of kindness across campus. We did have a cohort competition um, for kindness tickets. Um, you can see a group of students pictured with them below. The 8th grade cohort won, um, so they will be having an ice cream social um, this coming Thursday. We wrapped up SpongeBob the Musical this weekend after three grade showings. Um, and this upcoming month, our lead teachers will be leading our departments through the analysis of our building progress towards goal number one. And out of that, we are hoping to come out with some action steps um, that can help strengthen our efforts. Owl Middle um, has been using IXL data and IXL practice to improve student academic performance. Um, they administered a fall and a mid-year benchmark, and they've been holding data meetings to review the findings. Um, results have been discussed through the lens of what they know about their students in the classroom and how um, instruction can be adjusted to meet their needs. Yes, if you don't mind, that would be very helpful. As you can see, I need support here. Um, and goal this um, past month, um, goal has made progress towards board goal number one, um, academic uh, achievement. Um, Twelve goal students um, either made high honor roll or high honor roll with distinction, which is a great accolade, um, and they're very proud of all their students. Goal is working to strengthen connections um, within and outside of the program to create healthy lifestyles. Um, so recently, members of the board were at a presentation um, on blue zones, where students talked about places where people lived uh, over 100 years, um, and the students included ways that Goal could incorporate what they learned about Blue Zones um, into the program. Okay. Owl High School. Um, so Owl has been working hard in the um, past month on academics and social emotional learning. You can see the entire program, uh, program took a visit to the Rochester Museum and Science Center. Mr. Hines is seen with some large solar eclipse glasses. Those are the exact ones that all of our students are going to be getting soon. <laughs> Um, so just talking up the unique experience that's coming um, this, this April break. Um, you can also see some of the OWL students hiking in one of the pictures up top. The OWL High team is planning monthly hikes so students can continue to experience our local parks as the weather warms up. Um, Schrader um, is celebrating the induction of world language and art honor societies, um, as well as Cortina G's um, championship achievement and triple jump. Um, and she broke her own record in the qualifier, which is pretty incredible. Uh, and there's one more. Yeah, Thank you. Um, they also celebrated Black History this month um, with a door decorating contest. Um, and there was also a display of culture and talents with staff and students. Mm -hmm. Thomas High School is in between sports seasons, but their academic teams have had outstanding years. The Thomas Model UN team attended the United Nations Association of Rochester Conference this past weekend at St. John Fisher University. Um, here they are outside of the school for a pre-conference picture. Thomas had three students achieve honorable mention status and three receive outstanding delegate awards. Um, our district robotics team recently competed in a regional competition in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The team ended up moving on um, as fifth out of 50 teams, um, but ended up in 13th. Um, the kids had a great experience, and they represented the school district wonderfully. The team goes to RIT um, March 14th, 15th, and 16th, and if they win, the next stop is in Houston, Texas um, at the end of April. Thomas is also looking forward to their school musical Shrek, um, which will take the stage later this month. Um, that wraps up our secondary report. Thank you. Thank you.
I know, yeah. That's perfect. That, that's perfect. <laughs> okay, so we just want to say thank you for inviting us here tonight to talk with you guys um, a little bit about Wondercare, if you can believe it. Um, the end of this school year will be the final of our fifth year. Um, it seems like we just started this last year. So um, <laughs> we're very excited to always come and talk about um, Wondercare and, and what that. So um, we actually serve 621 um, families um, across all of the seven elementary schools. So the unique, unique students um, you can see up there for each of the, the sites, our largest one being Plank South, um, and then mm -hmm. our um, smaller site with State. So we have um, 686 total unique students that we serve um, every day, Monday through Friday, um, after school, so that's exciting. Um, it seems crazy to think, but we are going to be opening up our 24-25 um, registration. So we will open April 1st um, and to our currently registered families, and um, they will have priority registration to get in um, or to, to re-register for their needs for next year um, through April 12th. And then April 13th at 9 a.m., we open up to the community. So and we also just wanted to say we have an incredible staff team, and you'll see some pictures here as we move forward about our programming, um, but we do uh, employ 115 um, part-time staff. So pretty exciting, and we're excited to show you a little bit about our programming. <clears throat> When Aaron and I first started this program together, we kind of wanted to, we had the opportunity to build it kind of from the ground up. So one of the things we really wanted to talk about today is what our staff are doing um, and what the kids are doing. And basically, we came up with this curriculum model. We call it the Core 7. Actually, Aaron came up with it. I'm going to be honest with you. But I'll take some credit for it. Um, <laughs> we worked together. We worked together. It was great. Um, so we have these seven kind of like components that our staff utilize in terms of the curriculum throughout the course of the month, the course of the year. Um, the first one being literacy. And when I say this, when I say this when I'm training staff, when I'm talking to staff, we're not like, at, we're not sitting in a classroom instructing, right? These are all hands-on learning experiences for the kids. They've been sitting all day, they need to move. So um, those are just some pictures, really, they kind of speak a thousand words, but you know, they love to read. Um, and one of the cool things that our Clem North site is we had a student-led newspaper that they have been working on every month. So, um, growth with care. So we started this um, to follow the district's model at the time with cooperation, accountability, respect, and excellence. It's kind of morphed a little bit now, more so into positive behavior management we really focus on with the students. Um, and also teamwork, conflict resolution, social emotional learning. It's kind of special that we do get that opportunity to really focus on it a lot more throughout the course, a lot <laughs> throughout the course of the day with these kids. Uh, wellness. So really wellness, we kind of incorporate a lot of outside time, um, movement activities in the gym. We do some yoga stuff, um, meditation, mindfulness. And also the big thing these kids love is to eat. <laughs> so I did have to kind of dig to find some healthier foods, but I did, I found some. So um, there they made apple donuts at the bottom. The other pictures after that, they were covered in sprinkles, but you know, uh -huh. I will, I'll be honest with that one. But they do a lot of cooking and um, healthy eating projects and not healthy. <laughs> um, service learning, with this kind of goes hand in hand with a little bit of, um, team building, so once a month we try to do some sort of service learning within um, the schools. That can be anything internally, such as um, sometimes the kids will get some rakes and some outside brooms and clean up all the mulch that comes in off of the playground that covers then the sidewalk and then in winter becomes these giant wooden filled wood chip filled snowball so we get them out there to clean that up. We also get some outside services such you can see um, the, the fire truck came um, and the kids were able to get on and kind of uh, see, see some of the, the fire trucks as well. Arts and humanities, again, we're trying to do a lot of different kinds of things. It's not just crayons and markers and scissors. We're trying to go, you know, the mindful coloring mural up there in the middle is from um, State Road uh, where each of the kids did their own section of, the, of, of that mural and put it up together. Um, so we try to uh, incorporate all sides. It's not just um, coloring and, and, and coloring sheets and such. The greatest thing, Sch Schlegel down there in the bottom right, 
right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, is uh, they have done a couple uh, musicals um, with with the after school care, and it's been very very cool, very popular. Yeah, we had 200 parents um, come in a month ago to watch Cinderella, and then Schlegel actually we they our Wonder Care kids did it as an assembly, so that was kind of was cool a special thing to happen. Um, STEM, obviously, that's a that's a huge buzzword, um, and the kids just. I, I will say that our staff that plan some of these STEM activities, it goes. It, they they. It's not just them actually doing the, the STEM activity; they're explaining the science behind it as well. So it's exciting to see. That's me. Um, and then our last one was we wanted to. Um, when we built the program to make sure that we allotted time for academic and homework support. And I will say, I have a fifth grader. When he comes home from Wonder Care and his homework's done, it is very, <laughs> it is very nice. I do have to look it over sometimes, but um, <laughs> just giving them the time and the space. I know I certainly can't help him with fifth grade math, but I do have some staff, high school staff, who can, which is incredible. So I think that's it. And that's it. Oh my goodness. Well, I just got one more thing, but before I say that, I just, my kudos to both of you. I mean, I can't believe it's been five years either, uh, and throw a pandemic in the middle of that, that and all the that challenges that that brought along with it. It's just such a, it's such a feather in our district's cap, but certainly in the two-year caps. You're amazing leaders, and it is a very unique program, so thank you so much. I know how hard you guys both work, oh. and all of your staff as well. So, Great. kudos to you. My last thing is actually, you had it on the, on the could you go to the next slide? Just a reminder that this is Music in Our Schools Month, um, and so we want to make sure that everyone has a chance to not only look at our Music in Our Schools, but our Youth Art as well, because uh, it's also Youth Art Month. And if you could, check us out on WebsterSchools.org or follow us on Facebook or X so you don't miss any of our wonderful student performances or art events that we have going on during this month. And with that, that ends our campus news, and thank you both very, very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is that okay to move on? Yes. Yeah, okay. Good. Moving on to our our uh, our presentation for the day, we are so excited. Um, we are so excited to be able to bring to you our a uh, little bit about our web and link. It's, I don't think that the board has actually had a chance in the last couple of years to hear, you know, some of the updates and whatnot. So, without further ado, I'm going to turn things over now to Robert, who will bring uh, and introduce the group that will be presenting. So, Robert, if you could, I'll turn it over to you. Look at this crew, this is exciting. Yeah, feel free to move chairs and yep, slide in yeah, anywhere you'd like. <laughs> and then yeah, Robert, I'll let you go from here and introduce the team. Alrighty, good afternoon everyone. Happy Tuesday. It is Tuesday, right? <laughs> yeah. It's Tuesday. Good. I'm very happy to introduce Emma um, and our lovely web and link leaders as well as our students. Um, as you know, building strong student leaders is very important to sustaining a positive and inclusive community. And I'm very happy that you're going to hear from some of our leaders today, both in web and link, but two of whom were also at the student leadership breakfast this past oh, Saturday. Hey. So very excited. And with no further, further ado, Emma. Thanks. All right. Um, so thanks for having us all. So just a really quick overview of the program. Um, so Web and Link, um, Web's the middle school version and Link's the high school version, are in all of our secondary schools. And the program goal is that the students transitioning to the building, so the sixth graders and the ninth graders, will get support from some of the older students to make that transition less scary, essentially. Um, so it's really a designed to be a year-long program with a lot of activity during the summer. Um, so they've got the orientation, you'll hear about that today, and then various events throughout the school year, including some classroom visits. Um, social follow-ups and some individual check-ins. Um, and the motto of the program, it's built on the belief that students can help students succeed. So um, we're gonna let it come to life a little bit more than I would be able to do with um, some of our amazing students here to talk about both their experiences as leaders and their experiences as um, students transitioning into the building, um, along with our advisors. So I will let them take it away. <laughs> uh, nice to meet you guys. Uh, Jeff Compson, I'm PE at Willink. Um, is this on? 
Yep. Yeah. Um, and I'm one of the web coordinators. Um, so I'm just going to kind of explain a little bit about what we do in our program. Um, Stacy and I were, this is our first year with as web coordinators, and we were lucky enough to have um, some great coordinators before us who had set some, some really good ground for us. Um, so we took over the program and wanted to kind of spice things up a little bit. And um, basically what our program consists of, it's trying to make kids feel more comfortable as they're in that transition. Um, feel like they have a sense of belonging and they're not just coming into this big new school, um, not knowing anything about the school or knowing anybody. Um, and it also is great for our older kids, the eighth graders, to put them in those leadership roles. Um, so moving on to our plot timeline right here. Um, it starts pretty much coming up here in April where we introduce it to our faculty um, and we kind of um, ask them to give us input on some of those seventh graders who are about to transition to eighth grade um, to basically kind of encourage them to apply um, for the program. Um, so it starts with that and then we have our application process um, where any student is allowed to submit an application um, and we do have a process of who we select for that. Um, it's input from teachers, administration, um, other students as well. Um, so that's where it begins. Um, once we have our leaders selected, uh, we start our process of training them to be leaders. Um, and it works, we start off with just a fun activity where we invite all those kids to basically come in. Um, we start introducing the program, but do a little kickball in there so it's fun and exciting. <laughs> um, and then where we get to our summertime is where the fun begins, um, where we train our web leaders of what they're going to be doing on that actual orientation day. And you'll hear from them in a little bit on some of that process. Um, and then the actual orientation day is when those sixth graders come in. Um, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this before. The energy in the gym is just insane. Um, the eighth graders are just basically standing on chairs, getting kids excited. Um, so there's really no standing in the corner and hiding because you are in it. Um, it's a lot of fun, exciting. Um, you're probably communicating with 50 different other people and you, you don't even realize it. So it's a really cool program. Um, and then it doesn't end there, it goes throughout the whole year. We have kids go into homerooms once a month um, and we try and have it align with the uh, character trait of the month um, that's going on in our school. Um, so kids will go into the homerooms, it's another chance for them to connect with those sixth graders. Um, and then the next part is more of our social follow-ups. Um, so we have web leaders assigned each sixth graders and on when it's their birthday we have them hand deliver uh, birthday cards um, and we encourage those eighth graders to do it as like a face-to-face -face type of thing not just hey I'm gonna leave it on your locker happy birthday um, so they have that face-to-face -face and, and like I said it's it's building those leaders um, and also making those sixth graders feel a little bit more comfortable um, and on to the web plan we'll stay right back at that other one actually um, so the summer days like I said it's it's a lot of fun um, there's the atmosphere is just awesome there's posters all over the gym um, like I said there's eighth graders that I never thought I would hear scream screaming um, cheering dancing um, it's also a time for them to meet some of their teachers a lot of teachers come in we have admin there um, they get their class schedule they get to go see their locker um, and then those eighth graders kind of transition them through the building showing them different things um, that they'll be using throughout their middle school career and I am going to turn it over to Stacy now. Um, and thank you again for having us. Um, the web program is designed um, not just for that summer orientation, but throughout the year. And um, it supports both the sixth graders, but the eighth graders really um, helping them take on that leadership role and to see them blossom and grow um, from the summertime through the year and the responsibility they take on has been um, it's been wonderful to watch that. Um, they obviously help with the orientation over the summer, and um, we had several web leaders participate in some video recordings, which are part of our morning show, um, highlighting the different character traits of the month. Um, they push in for care in the classroom, and when um, this year when we did that, we tried to make a slight change um, as we um, have gone through the training. I was able to go to a follow-up training in September 
where I learned some new things of different ways which we can incorporate um, our web leaders in with our sixth graders. And I know we have some things that we're thinking down the line that we would like to um, add in, um, possibly a community service piece in the future mm -hmm. and things like mm -hmm. that. So that has been um, very helpful for us. But one thing that we took with the care in the classroom when they go in is kind of revisiting some of the activities that they did over the summer. So it was kind of a reflection time for them to go back and, um, you know, they haven't seen their, um, the sixth graders for, you know, a month or so before the first time they went in. So they, the first activity involved just kind of remembering names and um, kind of got everybody moving and there was a lot of excitement that went along with that. Um, our web leaders were super helpful at Open House. Um, we had quite a few volunteers come in helping parents find different areas of the classroom. Um, we have bright green shirts um, for them to wear so they're easy to find. Um, they wore those shirts on the first day of school, which um, that was really helpful and I think really comforting to a lot of our sixth graders because they knew if, when they had trouble with their lockers, they'd turn around and there'd be somebody in their bright green shirt and they had help right away. Um, our sixth graders um, participated, many of them, with the pumpkin run this year, and our web leaders were instrumental in um, volunteering to help support that event, and they were cheering on our um, sixth graders, and it was, um, it was great to see everybody. They had the music playing, and it was a lot of fun. Um, they also helped out, um, many of them, with the We Will Inc. Halloween. Um, Clem North is actually in need of some volunteers for their holiday party and we had a handful of them that stepped up and um, headed over to Clem North one night to help them out. Um, they've been really helpful um, during some homeroom times in our 1214 class, um, providing crafts and different activities for our 1214 students since the activities the web leaders were doing in the other classes may not um, fit with those particular students, so creating some of their own activities to help them. Um, Special Olympic volunteers and Empire State volunteers. So they really have taken on so many different opportunities for leadership. Um, it's been a wonderful to see them. Um, our sixth graders coming in, I am a sixth grade teacher, and so I had the opportunity just to kind of touch base with the sixth graders. Like, you know, tell me, you know, how did this, you know, make you feel? Did it? Did you find orientation helpful and overwhelming? The kids were just saying, you know, yes, I was so nervous coming in. I, I didn't know where I was going to go. And, and the experience of having orientation was really helpful. And I have several quotes up there um, that you could read. But most importantly, I invited, we invited a couple of our sixth graders to join us so they could share a little bit of their experience with orientation. So Stephen or Asude, do you guys want to go? <laughs> um, it was very helpful because like in the summertime I was have a lot of anxiety about walking into this big school because it's huge you don't know anybody there and then there was an orientation and it was like a lot more calming because then you got to meet new people because it's like you guys weren't in assigned seats. You guys would just walk in the gym and it would be around all these people and you get to meet new people. And then you were separated with these web leaders that would be able to show you around the school and show you how to open your lockers. Um, and then we were able to go to our hall and be in a group with other kids and we did some fun activities. And I was able to learn other people's names, which was very helpful. I found orientation really helpful because um, when I first, in the summer, thinking about going to middle school, um, I thought I would be really, like, just sad and, like, not excited to go to school, which I love actually le learning. And um, after the orientation, I thought, well, maybe this place might be not that scary as I thought it would be, as in, like the eighth graders were so nice to us the web leaders was really nice to us and they really helped us go through and especially my web leaders they were awesome and um like the way they showed us around were so like helpful and calming that like the way that i taught how middle school was like going was really the opposite which 
was really helpful for me. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Thank That's you. awesome. It is. Thank you so much. Our, um, our web leaders, um, in um, talking with some of them, we asked, like, why did you even apply to be web leaders? And overall, like, their reasons were amazing. Like, some of them want to be teachers. Some of them want to work on their communication skills. Some of them, like, they were very specific. Like, I wanted to work on my leadership skills. Or I know that I'm uncomfortable in front of others, so I knew that this was something I needed to do. Like, they were so reflective in their reasons for wanting to be web leaders and also in what they have gained from their experience, which, um, I was going to let them um, share a little bit of their experiences because I think you guys have been amazing web leaders and we're so grateful to have you. So I will let them share a little bit of their experience. Um, so uh, I had worked with the 1214 kids and I was able to work with them last year so I was more familiar with them, which was definitely helpful. Um, it was definitely great to learn to work with them with their different abilities, learn how to communicate with them differently. Um, they had invited me to field trips to Wickham Farms and the Special Olympics at SUNY Brockport, so that was a fun experience. Um, it really taught me time management, trying to plan out activities that were the best for them to be able to connect with them. Uh, I really enjoyed my time. I can't wait to continue this in high school. That's good. Okay, good. <laughs> so I was also working with her in the 1214 classrooms. I think that it has taught me many leadership skills that I will use for like the rest, the rest of my life until I'm probably even later an adult when I have like kids and all that <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Um, I also went to all the field trips. It taught me how to communicate with them in different ways That's since awesome. they couldn't always communicate, but most times they're pretty good at it. That's great. And then... Yeah, that's all I got. Okay, <laughs> that's great. That's awesome. So um, we are very grateful that you have supported this program in all of our schools. Um, being on the side of the coordinator, it has been wonderful just to watch the growth of the students, and mm -hmm. we're grateful for your support um, as we continue to um, bring this to Willink, and I'm sure the other schools um, will do the same, and it's a great opportunity for them. And, eliminates a lot of stress for those fifth graders coming into sixth grade with the fear of the unknown. So thank you for your support. Oh, thank you. I think we're all impressed. Definitely. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'll scoof that up. Um, there you go. Anyways, we, uh, thank you. It's just lovely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Will you be um, link or web leaders when you're in eighth grade, do you think? Has it inspired you? Great question. You think so? Nice. Yeah. That's good. And will That's you be good. link leaders when you get to high school? Yeah. Excellent. That's awesome. Future leaders. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your stories as well. Mm -hmm. It's a little intimidating up here sometimes, <laughs> but we appreciate it. And they created all that themselves. That's amazing. Um, the best part of our 1214 too is we have our plan for um, our general education classrooms. Um, on their own, they create their own little lessons. So mm -hmm. completely hands off for us. So that's the definition of a leader. So great job. Yeah, it's awesome. It definitely is. Thank you. I just want to say kudos. It is so amazing to listen to the four of you talk about this, and it is just wonderful, and it does our hearts good. It's a great program, and it doesn't happen without an intense amount of time and work that I know the two of you put in, and all of our adults that kind of are in the background making that all happen for our kids and putting our kids up front. And I know our two principals, it's, in, it's incredible to have the two of them in supporting the middle school web level. Something about this, a couple things about this program. Number one, there are several of our districts in the area that do the link program at the high school, but not all of those that do the link program actually do the web program. So kudos to all of our middle school group that actually bring that. It's a constant learning process for the advisors. I know you guys are constantly having to retrain and relearn things in order to keep spicing it up. I think you use that language, which is so true. And then a little known fact, when this thing started, Mr. Swinson was right there at the beginning of that. The two of us were middle school principals <laughs> when this all started and began. So we've gone through the trainings as well. 
but what it does and what it can do for a building is, is transformational. And so thank you all for coming and sharing your stories here tonight. And like Mrs. Diagardi's question, that was also something that's near and dear to my heart. Anytime we have web leaders, our hope is that at some point maybe you get a chance to be a link leader as well. And if you guys are, if you guys thought the program was great, we're hoping you're going to be a, a web leader when you guys get to that opportunity. So kudos. Thank you. And thanks, Mrs. Joman, Thank for bringing you. it out. Awesome. Can I have a motion to approve the instruction report as presented? Carol, so moved. Second, Maria. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. This is so exciting. I know it. I love it. I love awesome. That program. Kate did it. I hope Brady does it too. Oh, I do too. I know. It's so great. <laughs> Good night. Uh, all right. This is where we move on to board business. Yeah. We have treasurer's reports, right? Yeah. Yes. Mr. Powers, did you have a favorite game of the web kids? <laughs> oh, he's coming to the mic. I know it. Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, next time we're going to bring a game that none of us adults were able to solve, but our web leaders. I know, that's the one. I, oh, exactly. Yeah. I love it. We'll talk that more was about it. That's perfect. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Powers. <clears throat> All right. That's <laughs> so fun in those games. All right. All right, Mr. Freeman. Yeah. All right. First up is we have two treasurer's reports for December and January. I uh, just want to highlight for everybody um, that we're continuing to take advantage of interest rates where they are right now uh, for both months. You know, cash flow is pretty strong. Um, so um, we are looking to invest as much as possible. I will point out, you might notice in December, uh, there is a negative on uh, one of the reports for the general fund, and that is purely a timing of when our bank statements and when our payroll went out. Um, so that's why we're not in the negative. It's just the, the transactional timing of it. So just wanted to point that out for the month of December. And then month of January, you'll notice probably uh, what stands out is both these expenditures are higher than previous months. Uh, because usually that is the uh, right around that time frame is when BOCES reconciles, especially student enrollments. Um, so all adjustments to services are made. So we usually see an uptick there. So just wanted to point those out for the uh, for the month of January. Okay. Questions? Everybody's good. All right. Motion to approve December 2023 and January 2024 treasurer's reports as presented. So moved, so move, Linda. Second. Jen, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You know, I try to look around and spread it out. It's that teacher it. thing. Yeah, right. Shouldn't always be the same kids every time. Um, <laughs> well, you know, it's the wait time that I'm it's the perfect. worst at. I, know. I want the answers. Um, all right, moving on to the resolution to nominate uh, Tom Naspeka for our BOCES rep that was added in. If anyone got a chance to see it or not, it is in there. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we're all good. I know Tom spoke last month, or was it two yeah, months ago? Yeah, and he was with us in Albany when we went and advocated. Yep. Uh, and he does Tom's a great been job with us for a long time. Yep. So, All right, with that, can I have a motion to nominate Thomas J. Nespeca, residing in the Webster Central School District, as a candidate for membership on the Monroe No. 1 BOCES Board for a term of office to begin July 1st, 2024, and end on June 30th, 2027. So move, Jen. Second, Carol. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Calendar. Second reading. Yeah, nothing has changed since the first reading, so I think that we're all in a pretty good place. Um, any questions on that? Two weeks in the holiday season there? and Love two weeks at Christmas. Yep. Wednesday before Thanksgiving might be just as important for many people oh, I know in our true. district. That's very true. <laughs> so in the we have the lunar the New lunar New Year, year we are yep we are off as well. So other than that, right. sounds good. All right, motion to approve the second reading of the 2024-25 school calendar, and <coughs> we don't have to move it forward. This is old. Yep, that's okay. Second, mm -hmm. approve the second reading. So move, Charlie. Second, Maria. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
The only thing I will add to that, I know it's already been approved, but uh, the, the TBD on the graduation dates, again, we will set those as of uh, August 1st each year. Yep. So. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Next up is the second reading of the workplace violence prevention policy. Should be pretty standard. We read it. No Nothing changes. else has changed. So, yep. We good? Okay. Yep. Motion to approve the second reading of the workplace violence protection policy. So moved. Carol? Second. Second. Linda? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. E. Johnson Foundation donation acceptance. So we have. So a donation from the Johnson Foundation for ten thousand dollars to the district. Uh, you've probably uh, they're very they've have a history of being very generous with the district over the years, um, and they're just continuing that on. Uh, this is uh, to honor the hard work of the staff at Trader High School, um, which they've listed in their in their letter uh, to the board. Uh, and so we have an account for them already set up because of their generosity previously. So uh, with your approval, we'll accept it and add it to their uh, funding. Mm -hmm. Questions, we're good, all right. Motion to accept the donation. So moved, Maria, second. Second. Linda, all in favor? Aye. 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 Capital outlay bid. Yes, yeah, so uh, back in February, it seems like forever ago, but uh, mid-February, uh, we accepted bids uh, at the buildings and grounds facility for the 23-24 capital outlay project uh, that was approved as part of the budget, our $100,000 project for state road gutter work. Um, so the low bid was RMG Custom Metal uh, coming in at $94,650. Uh, we had three companies bid on that. I did highlight one on the bid sheet for you. We had to... Um, not accept the one bid there uh, that's highlighted in yellow because they did not fill out any of the bid documents. Uh, so they did not uh, hit all the requirements for a public works bid. Uh, so we uh, could not accept that one. I just wanted to make a note of that in the records officially. Uh, but RMG Custom Metal uh, with board's approval tonight will get awarded the contract. Motion to approve the capital outlay bid acceptance. So moved, Carol, second, Charlie, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, yes, annual election and budget vote. Uh, I am next again. Yep. Just pull it up. Good. Oh, so next up is just our legal notice of the annual election and budget vote. Uh, we have to publish this. Um, four times, but not before April 2nd, uh, which is laid out there, and uh, just giving notice of our uh, proposition at, for um, transportation and for general um, budget vote information. All right. Motion to approve the legal notice for the annual election and budget vote on Tuesday, May 21st, 2024. So moved. so moved, Linda, second, Carol, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And then lastly is just the resolution to approve the hours, which we will be open on May 21st uh, for approval by resolution. Pretty standard hours, right? 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Yep. Uh, I don't, I can't find when the last time that was ever changed. Okay. Sounds good to me. Motion to approve the resolution establishing the hours of the annual district meeting on Tuesday, May 21st, 2024. So moved, Charlie, second. Maria, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, smooth as butter. Now we move on to board member highlights. So we will open it up. Anybody? Well, um, we had Clem South yesterday. I think the big, the big message is that a lot of our committees a lot of our committees need volunteers. Mm -hmm. So I think across the board, if families are willing to step up and be a treasurer or a secretary, mm -hmm. whatever you're able, of do, able to do, um, our PTSAs really could use help. And that's kind of the message, so. Yeah. Okay, I just want, I wanted to share with the community that our um, biannual community survey, um, strategic planning biannual survey will be coming up. We'll be um, releasing that sometime in April. Um, and that's a survey for community parents, students, faculty, and staff in order to make some decisions in terms of our strategic planning. 
Um, we have also, um, as Linda last meeting um, referred to, two subcommittees, um, strategic planning subcommittees. One is in AI and education, and the other is for the electric bus fleet. Um, and we attended a, an AI subcommittee this last week um, where we uh, is, try to establish um, where we are going to move forward. I think there was an agreement that we need to come up with some plans because AI is here, it's not going away, and we have to have um, some kind of decisions as to how the district is going to be um, dealing with um, AI in our community. Um, and so we're excited about it. Um, we're gonna look at it in a positive light uh, moving forward, and uh, we're going to be um, putting those plans together um, through that AI subcommittee. Um, and Janice is gonna yeah. talk about the electrical buses. Yes, so for the electric bus committee, and I'm probably gonna leave people out, but we had representations from construction companies to buildings and grounds, security, technology, obviously transportation, um, district office, and while it wasn't quite as positive at times as I'm sure the AI is. Um, <laughs> it was a good meeting of the minds. Yeah. I won't say it's negative, it's just there's a lot of realities yeah. and tricks and things. So really where we're at is we're going to get a good status of Webster, because we need, we need to figure out Webster, right? Like it is what it is, things can change, cannot change, but as a district, we're really gonna hone in on what we have, what our capabilities are, and what the future could look like currently the way things are and as technology changes. So almost like a state of the district type research project. Right. Yep. That's great. So, yeah. More to come. More to come. Well stated. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Because it's such a complicated It's a lot. Issue. Yeah. yeah it it's is. a lot. That's, That's for sure. Is. Yep. So. That's great. Thanks. Yeah. I don't know what else. There have been a lot of musicals, so if musicals, anyone yep. has had a chance to go to some of those and the Shrek coming up that was mentioned a couple of times tonight. A lot of concerts. Mm -hmm. Concerts, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just have a, an announcement for when their um, general meeting is Wednesday at noon, and there is also a Webster will be host, or when in conjunction with the town of Webster will hold a drug take back um, for the community, and that will be April 27th, and the a drop off will be at the town court. It'll be from 10 a.m. to 2. There'll be signs all over town, but if you have any unused medications, put them in a bag and drop them off that day. And thank you to Goal and the tutoring center. We had an incredible visit. We also participated in a lockdown drill. That's right. Yeah, That's right. yeah we got a we got a full, full gamut. Yeah. Right. So no, it was incredible. It was it was my first time being because I'm not a teacher. Yeah. I'm not an educator. Lived through it. It was it was amazing to to see and Good. kids know exactly what they're to do. So it was great. Thank you. And we go to Spry next week. And we're yes. in the ten next week. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm looking that. forward to that. Yep. Right. Anybody else? We have um, a diversity event, though, um, the 23rd, 23rd. Yep. the convening. convening. Not to put you on the spot, but I just know before we have our next meeting, that that's something that I had written down as yeah. well. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. 23rd. 9 to noon. 9, 9 to noon. noon. Perfect. Yep. Right, right here. Right, right, right on the second floor, too, right? Yep. Right in this room. Yep. Yes, the convening on equity. Second, Second one. one. Last year's was amazing, yeah, so was. I'm really looking forward to this year's as well. Yeah. All, right. Great. All right, that brings us to consent agenda. Are there any questions or anything in the consent agenda? Nope. All right, with that, can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as recommended by the superintendent? So move Jen, second Linda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we don't have any speakers tonight, so the only other note I have is that next Tuesday, we from tonight, is our budget number two workshop. Sure. So I believe that's it. That's it. Get ready to move around for our learning. That's oh, right. we're going to be on the move this time. Stretching the brains, moving the brains. We've got a couple of activities planned. Oh, <laughs> all right, so I'm going with comfy clothes then for this one. Is that right? Like, I'm gonna well, I don't like, know how much you have to well, Okay, all right, all right, all right. Well, you know. That's right. All right, with that, I'm going to have a motion to adjourn. Ooh, yes, Carol, I knew you had that one. Second? Maria, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Have a great night.